Hi everyone, uh, welcome to ELI, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us uh, Mr. Rahul Vishwakarma, uh, co-founder and CEO of uh, Mate Labs, uh, which is using AI ML algorithms to help uh, supply chain teams. Uh, Rahul is a graduate of uh, Maulana Ajad National Institute of Technology and has been uh, an entrepreneur since uh, 2016. Hi Rahul, welcome to ELI. Hi Priya, thank you so much and thanks for the kind uh, introduction. Appreciate that. Uh, Rahul, I would also request you to introduce yourself uh, from your side uh, to our audience. Yeah, absolutely, sure. Um, so, as you mentioned very well, uh, uh, that uh, we are currently running an AI startup where we are helping large FMCG companies uh, with accurate demand forecasting. Uh, we also uh, uh, were chosen to represent AI in India uh last year by google as one of the best startups out of asia um uh, we we started this journey for last four years where for three years we spent in building uh the technology the automated technology which uh, very proudly i can say is currently world's fastest uh by a margin of 100x uh before that uh, i started my journey in machine learning uh, and ai at large uh in 2010 second year of, uh, second year of my college where along with my co-founder kailash we started uh, uh coming across a lot of uh, uh interesting uh, problem statements which uh, could only be solved by uh, technologies like machine learning right at that time there's hardly anything that was anything remotely close to the name AI, uh, if I have to put it like that. Uh, but yeah, we both of us had gotten a good enough opportunity to be able to be a part of this ecosystem since then. We ended up contributing to uh, open source ecosystem back then, uh, helped uh, individuals and companies uh, understand this technology and uh, uh, how to how to use it as well. But I'm also a chemical engineer by degree. Uh, I have worked uh, as a process control engineer in oil and gas sector, where I was designing uh, large uh, automated control systems for extremely large projects. So my last project was a $1.3 billion oil and gas project, where I was working in Seoul, um, and I was designing the entire upstream uh, automation for them. Uh, uh, well, uh, sounds interesting, very interesting. Uh, now, I uh, that. would uh, like to know in detail what kind of problems uh, you are solving uh, at a ground level. Uh, what is the kind of oh, sure. uh, uh, reach and impact you have uh, been able to make uh, so far? Sure, absolutely. So uh, imagine you are a large FMCG company, right? You would be uh, selling uh, thousands of products uh, across different categories, uh, across various uh, 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 lo geographical locations, right? Uh, now, if you are a large company with say billions of dollars in revenue every year, right? Uh, one of the key challenges that you will face uh, uh, is uh, how much should I produce, right? How much should I manufacture and how much will I be able to sell? Because that is going to be, that is going to decide uh, how much should you be procuring from the market? How many people are going to, are you going to deploy to manufacture it, to distribute it, to um, store the inventory, right? How many customers should you include everything, right? Now this problem uh, at large is of a scale where a company has to make those decisions every week uh, for close to 50,000 to 100,000 combinations, right? So imagine <clears throat> there are 1,000 uh, products uh, across, say, 50 geographical locations that you're distributing to, say, in India, right? Now, <clears throat> that alone basically makes it 50,000 combinations, right? To do this, companies have... Uh, 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 supply chain people uh, and under that they have people like demand planners who basically do this as their job right uh, and uh, traditionally over last over centuries right this has been a challenge how much will i be able to sell you know be it you are a large company or you are a kirana store right if i tell you that this is how much you're going to sell that's basically uh, foretelling right you basically know how much you're going to sell and everything else is dependent on that Right, so companies have been struggling to do that for centuries, right? And uh, 
the relative accuracy that I can tell you uh, that this industry has is sub 50%, sub 40%. Right? Because, of course, it is difficult to predict what's going to happen in the future. Now, with our technology and with our methods, we have been able to do and help, the, help these companies move from, say, sub 30, 40 percent accuracy to beyond 80 to 90 percent accuracy. Not just that, we actually were able to, in terms of impact, we actually uh, were the first company to be able to come up with a, a way and approach to predict demand during COVID as well. And not just any product, uh, hand sanitizer to be precise. Uh, for uh, the company which you and I know very well, I won't be able to name them, but yeah, uh, just imagine hand sanitizer, which hardly anyone knew in the country or anywhere in the world before, right? Suddenly became the star product everywhere, right? The sales not just doubled, they were 10x. How would you predict demand like that? So we help them. Uh, anticipate that demand, uh, help them ramp up their production, ramp up their distribution before the lockdown happened so that they were able to distribute it and needy people like us could have access to that product. So yeah, that's a quick thing that I can tell you. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing I must say, I'm, I'm really curious to know how it uh, works in back end, although uh, it is a different uh, uh, topic altogether. Um, but I'd, I'd like to ask you one question and I don't know if you have uh, sure. tried predicting this model or not. Uh, when will COVID end? Uh, have you tried to make it? <laughs> if I could predict that, I would have been the most happiest person in the world, right? And not just me, everyone would have been. <laughs> it's just that uh, it's very difficult to predict humans at a micro level you can still predict them at a macro level but very difficult to do that at micro level okay. and it's a virus so even a single would uh, origin uh, would give an origin uh, uh, origin to a million different cases right so it is difficult but i can we can still help you prepare around that for sure okay uh, uh, so uh, that was an abstract topic but uh, one uh, one uh, so uh, in the domain of AI, one common question gets asked uh, uh, more often than anything else, uh, which everybody is also concerned about uh, these days. Uh, are we at a point that uh, the uh, artificial intelligence is going to sur surpass the human intelligence level? Uh, not right now. Not right now. If, if not, not right now. Not right now. As a stakeholder of this industry, when do you think that will happen can it will it happen uh, if it will happen it will for sure it will for sure but absolutely not in next five years that i can definitely predict right okay. not beyond that because this ecosystem is rapidly changing right uh, any prediction that anyone made uh, say two years ago doesn't hold true anymore okay. right so uh, if you t see machine learning as a technology and i as uh, a stakeholder, as you rightly put in this, as a part of this ecosystem, right? Uh, I forbid to use AI as a term because it ends up misleading people a lot, right? So in my conversation, informal, formal, whatever it is, right? I always try to use machine learning as a term because we are trying to train a system for a very specific task, very specific task in a uh, controlled environment, right? So for a specific task, yes, you can uh, assume that it has already surpassed human uh, uh, level of uh, intelligence, but not cognition, right? Uh, um, in terms of making decisions, recognizing uh, uh, circumstances as well, right? But in an unconstrained environment, what you're referring to uh, is an unconstrained uh, intelligence. That is something that is uh, not uh, coming uh, soon what we can feel so it's at least not in the next five years for sure <clears throat> okay. um but still uh, there are some instances where a, a, uh, ai or uh, what you refer as ml also been very powerful for example uh predicting uh, our behavior uh on social media uh can ai algorithms uh, make us addicted to uh, uh some it can very well yeah 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 See, it's very simple now. See, we human, when you look at it from a macro scale, 
we tend to behave in herd right and herd always tend to follow a pattern there is always a, an order in the nature right and as far as there's an order in the nature there's a pattern which can be identified however complex it is right so as far as there is an order which can be predicted machine learning will always be able to do it so uh, coming to the point where can it help you get addicted to something yes very well because if it keeps giving you uh, thing uh, hooks uh, 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 or uh, instances which you really like and adore right you will always be hooked and uh, would get addicted to it so definitely yes okay uh, uh, being a layman myself i would like to ask you this question ai seems like a very powerful tool to have uh, what if uh, stronger entities like governments uh, like uh, news media like uh, of course social media these sort of things which have a greater impact and greater reach start a, uh, applying ai to uh, manipulate human beings uh, manipulate uh, things in a certain way um priya i lost you i'm sorry uh, i can't hear you so uh, my question yes. uh, as a as a layman myself uh, i would like to know uh, and i am also very curious about uh, this particular question how do you advise someone to prepare for a, a ai enabled world where everything is just driven by ai or ml how would i advise someone uh, to be prepared okay uh, you mean general uh, public general humans right okay yes. all right see uh, embrace it first of all because no matter what it is going to stay uh, and not for the bad but for the good uh it is going to stay because it is making our lives easier at so many instances that we may realize or not realize right second is when you start embracing it right is when you start seeing okay uh this is where it can really help us right so see it like a companion see it like a companion and then you can see okay these are the things that i can uh completely leave on automation and these are the thing that i can probably i would like to spend my time on right so probably then you get more time to work on stuff that you actually like to do and not the mundane stuff things like that okay a uh, few tough questions i'll mm. ask you and you can answer in a yes or no manner sure. can can ai influence uh, democracies uh, and uh, election processes it did no you saw that <laughs> you saw it uh, what happened in many nations right it did okay and it is it is scary as well it is scary absolutely scary but it's it's a uh, uh, it's a question it's uh it's the same thing how you can make someone addicted to a certain tool right it's the same thing that the moment you can influence someone's decision of using or not using the app it's the same thing that can be translated forward as well okay um so uh can you can you suggest uh, to a layman how do you spot uh, where ai or ml being used against you so basically controlling yourself basically uh, knowing what you like knowing what you don't like always asking logical questions and not getting swayed by a general opinion now this is easier said than done because people tend to always follow a general uh, opinion because you don't want to uh, be an outcast you don't want you to yourself to be treated like an outcast and if you uh, uh, don't follow a general opinion you will basically be considered an outcast so it is very difficult uh, what i just said to kind of do but just always ask this question always question okay what uh, uh, i am uh, consuming right on um uh, uh in the online world is it something that justifies uh, justified is it something that is factual so always look for facts rather than going for opinions right uh that's how you should you will be able to kind of just say because see you, uh, even if uh, someone like myself uh, where uh, understanding this technology and building things around it right uh, even i use social media right and and uh, those uh algorithms are intended uh, to kind of uh, make me use it more often 
but then if you have this always in the back of your head that yes uh, i this is the stipulated time that i'm going to use it and i'm going to stop it the most actually who are prone to it are younger generation actually is the younger generation the kids uh, who are now coming up uh, online and are getting exposed to it so they're probably parents should not uh, expose their kids prematurely to these technology actually okay okay uh, so uh, that that was a nice discussion and lot of uh, insights and now let's get into uh, the personal side of uh, being an entrepreneur i'd like to know about your journey uh, first uh, tell us when did you think of becoming an entrepreneur how this idea came to your head actually it was my co-founder's idea to be honest i always had uh, wanted to just work on problems um i love solving problems and i love uh, uh, uh digging myself into something right so my co-founder kailash has always been into startups he always wanted to and he has been a very good friend of mine uh, uh, since the first year of our first year so we were part of, we were in the same hostel as well and um, he only uh, suggested one day that why don't we start working uh, uh, towards a startup and then one day on fine day we ended up uh, come bumping onto an idea which we loved both of us equally right we wanted to enable uh, non developers to use and understand machine learning the way uh, we do right so that was the genesis of the idea and then basically the point was how and how do we do it so the point was that okay let's then probably the point the first thing that always comes to your mind is do i have money to survive basically right then we we decided that okay what we will do is we'll uh, uh uh take up a job and work for two years save up money and then quit that is exactly what we did i was fortunate enough and both of us were fortunate enough to have gotten a, a good job a well paying job and we were able to kind of save up enough money uh to quit after 2 years itself okay um uh, once you quit your job what are the things you did uh, did you hire people under you or did you start building no, no, no. from yourself so the, these are some of the early mistakes that you always do right see two starry eyed kids uh, out in the world um uh, want to build something right uh, we, we are all both first our first time entrepreneurs right so uh uh we started with a grand uh, this thing that we'll bring build this grand product which is going to be perfect from the day one itself day one of the launch we never really understood that you, it that doesn't happen in the real world uh, in reality it is not like that it is always an incremental uh, uh improvement that happens when you understand your uh, your users and your customers and their problems and their challenges and then you build upon it right it doesn't happen that you know everything all at once on the day zero itself so no it was only two of us who started working on it right it was only two of us and we uh, for approximately 8 months we didn't see anyone we didn't uh, speak to anyone that's all, that was our second mistake uh, that you should always validate whatever you are thinking your assumption everything right and uh, 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 we were just building 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 okay what happened then uh, uh... And we did build a couple of things we did build a couple of things but uh, it was more like a hammer looking for a nail okay so basically yeah uh, what i meant was uh, uh, it was more it was a product without a problem if i have to put it like that which is not solving a, a good problem they were all good to have problems but not a must have problem must have need right so then we basically scraped everything off and then we started complete fresh very simple product but solving a real problem after talking to a, a bunch of prospective users and then uh, we, we have been it, ha- it has been a long journey after that hmm okay so uh, now now let's uh, skip uh, 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 the part of you uh, pivoting uh, now let's go to the uh, uh, part where you find your first customer how that happened so that was basically where we were so there is this pharmaceutical company right which we came which uh, uh, we came across and uh, we got introduced to uh, their head of supply chain right uh, we were there and that time we were building our uh, we were selling our uh, 
uh, automated machine learning platform, right? Uh, we started asking their problem. We were just telling them that, listen, you can actually build a lot of your problems uh, by yourself. You don't need a data scientist to do all these things. And um, uh, uh, it would not take a lot of time either. Uh, something that would take a year, you can do that in under a week or two weeks or something like that, right? Uh, while we were selling and not very good at selling uh, back then, right? While you were doing that, uh, as when we started asking, okay, after frustrated of not, uh, literally not having him blink his eye on what we are trying to tell him, we started asking and understanding what are the challenges that you're looking at, right? What can we solve it for you? Let me just do that. Uh, and that's how the journey began. Uh, we were like, okay, listen, forget about everything. We will do it for you and pay us for that. Nothing else, right? What I'm trying to tell you is, uh, I mean, basically to that customer is that, uh, uh, you don't use our product. We will use our own product and we will solve this problem for you. We just showcase that this is solvable, right? That's how we got our first customer. And with that, we got closer to a customer, right? And that gave us a lot more insight on how can we really enable uh, businesses and uh, non-developers or non-techies to use machine learning. And what we realized then was that rather than uh, telling them that, listen, rather than writing a couple of lines of Python code, uh, you can use this uh, UI to build models. Let me uh, just automate the entire piece of it. Let me just automate the entire use case here. Because you as a user will never have enough time to kind of sit on it and work. And not just that, having an understanding of both domain and machine learning is very difficult. Even if I have automated the process of building the machine learning models, right? So that was more like uh, uh, something that, of an epiphany that clicked. And since then, we started automating the entire use case. And today, what basically takes a company to do it in nine months is something that takes 10, 10 minutes for us. Okay, and uh, that is, uh, that is uh, I think that is incredible uh, what you have uh, uh, been able to achieve. But, uh, there are other AI platforms as well. At the beginning of uh, our interview, you said uh, your your platform is at least 100x faster than any competing platforms. Uh, what what makes you validate that? Uh, what are some of the other other things that benchmarks? Are... Benchmarks. We have benchmarked our uh, our technology with any automated technology that is available in the world, uh, be the likes of Google, AWS, or the likes of H2O Data Robot or any other uh, open source technology as well. We have benchmarked it and also theoretically as well. So in both theoretically and benchmarks, uh, we have validated how fast we actually are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. uh, uh, from the looks of it, I can see that uh, your product is still in, in the process of evolving. Uh, what is your vision? What is the ult ultimate product you want to build uh, out of uh, this venture? See, ultimately, we would like to, what you were basically saying initially, right? Ultimately, we would like to automate a lot of mundane tasks that can be automated. And uh, the process of building machine learning models, deploying them, right, solving a use case should not take months or years. It should be instantaneous, basically. That's, in a, that's the ultimate goal with a clear focus right now on solving challenges around supply chain. Right. Um, so, as I said, uh, the first uh, leg of our journey, uh, where we have been able to automate the entire process of uh, uh, demand forecasting and planning, uh, which take took so much time, is something now in a couple of minutes possible. Okay. Um, now, tell us what are the challenges you have faced so far while building and growing this venture. The challenges is there one, there is no parallel available. So you can't really see or uh, understand, okay, if this product behaves or has been built like this, we should get some inspiration from that. There's no inspiration that we could draw, to be honest, because it's a fairly new way of uh, really uh, uh, automating and democratizing machine learning, right? So uh, uh, 
the challenges were, of course, and we have done by the way three iterations up till now. In last two years, there are three iterations that have been happened. And what you're looking on website is actually something that was two years ago. So that also is not updated yet. Uh, so we are yet to update that website as well. Uh, we have not put it out on openly what exactly it is. It is being tested uh, with very close set of our customers right now. Uh, 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 but what it is is working closely with the customer. Right. The challenges were how what should be the right user experience what should be the right approach how should be how should they the look and feel should be how and when i say look and feel it's not the the beautification part of it but more of a uh, more of a ux part of that right so those are the key challenges but also uh, see understand machine learning as a domain sits at the junction of domain understanding basically business understanding uh, machine learning as a technology and engineering as a technology as well, basically scaling it up, right? So three things, they all, uh, and AI is an ecosystem, uh, any AI product sits at the core of, or the junction of all three. So you basically have to know about the domain, even if you know about the technology part of it, the engineering or the machine learning part of it, you still have to get very close to it and understand where the, uh, uh, the, the key fits the lock, basically. Okay. Uh, now tell us, uh, since you have mentioned so many challenges, uh, you'd have got a lot of learnings as well. Can you tell us what are so, uh, those learnings which can uh, shorten the learning curve of other entrepreneurs who are just starting out? I gave you the best learning first of all. Sure. Okay. The first learning that I can tell you is uh, solve with a challenge and solve, start with a customer. Start with a problem and start with a customer. If your problem statement is not defined, if you cannot quantify your problem statement, then probably it is not a problem statement yet. It is still vague and ambiguous. One, two, uh, talk to a prospective customer or a user, especially in AI, talk to a prospective customer who actually has that need. And it is something that that customer cannot live without. So it should not be a, a good to have, it should be a must have, right? Three, that we learned that not, I would not recommend AI startups to do for is, one, uh, uh, think about how will you scale before even you have started solving the first problem itself. Why? Because that is going to hamper a lot of your growth. That is going to hamper a lot of your uh, initial uh, development. And if you don't solve it in the initial days, you will not be able to do that later in the period as well. Right? Uh, uh, data and everything else is something that can be solved very easily. That is, I, I don't consider that as a, much of a challenge to be honest, right? Um, uh, but yeah, I would recommend these three things. And then of course, uh, 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 build the right team and have everyone understand what we are building as well. Okay, I am uh, done with the questions, uh, uh, but one, one particular question uh, that I have from I uh, you know uh, from uh, my uh, my side, uh, and uh, of course you are not you shouldn't uh, answer the question. It is uh, it is not your problem to solve. But I would like to know uh, since you mentioned uh, that uh, your your automation is going to solve a lot of. Uh, uh, redundant uh, tasks that everybody does uh, manually uh, and uh, you you also envision uh, uh, your product to be uh, th that that kind of a product what happens when uh, these problems are get, uh, are automated when uh, all the manual task uh, is being automated what these people will do uh, after that for example when you uh, that's a good question that's a good question and i also keep thinking about that every time to be honest uh, uh this is uh, an ethical challenge uh and uh believe it or not but we especially at we at make lab we take this problem uh and we foresee this challenge uh very very seriously uh that what will happen to people uh when you end up automating that see uh uh yes uh with all humbleness uh, uh the tasks are going to get automated but and on the other side right it will leave a lot of room <clears throat> to improve the humanity and take it further, right? See, this has always happened in across, uh, if you look back in our history, right? Any technological shift that has happened, right? Has always uh, automated a lot of things. And then the, the entire humanity is moved to doing something new then, to creating and taking everything forward, right? 
uh, beat industrial revolution uh, uh, from your basically stone age to machine age, right? Or beat even the cars as well, right? Uh, everyone will then be getting more time to work on uh, creative stuff. Uh, and with creative, I don't just mean uh, uh, design or things like that. When I say anything, right? Business, you have creative challenges in business as well, in technology everywhere, right? And when I say you'll get more chance, basically then the solutions will be more effective, right? You will get much more time in idea, understanding and finding challenges. And every, of course, every era brings its own set of challenges and every challenge is an opportunity in itself, right? So that will create a lot more opportunities in itself. Okay. Uh, on that note, I'd uh, close this session and uh, interesting message to end with. Uh, uh, thanks for your time, Rahul, uh, and our best wishes for Matlab. Thank you so much. The other ventures you'll be. Thank you so much, Priya. Uh, Thank you so much, Priya. Appreciate that. And uh, listeners, uh, you can follow and connect with Rahul on LinkedIn by typing Rahul Vishwakarma. Uh, as the name suggests, he is like a Vishwakarma. Uh, he is building a lot of cool stuff. Uh, that is it for today's episode. We'll be back with another exciting entrepreneur. Stay tuned to ELI.